This week is in the video from the off. Mm -hmm. Hello and welcome back. And this is Frank and Kurtz. Five things we didn't expect before moving into a van. Hey, we're Tristan Kurtz. We live in our 35 year old camper van, old Gertie, with Frank and Murphy up here. And I think we probably have to start with the most stupid non expectation, which we didn't really factor in, was the amount of driving yeah. that you can end up doing. Yeah. This may sound insane, because of course, if you live in a van, there's gonna be lots of driving. You can end up driving without even realizing how much you'll drive. It can be even the simplest of things, like finding a park up. Yeah. You get to a park up, you're like, yes, this is it, and we're gonna be set up. And for some reason, that park up is either full, closed, or you just can't use it, or you might just get a vibe that you don't wanna be there. All of a sudden, you're looking for the next park up, which and could be- And may not be around the corner. <laughs> exactly. And then all of a sudden, you realize just to find your spot overnight you could have driven an extra couple of hours without even sort of computing yeah yeah you know and then when you're doing that every single day we're not lewis hamilton you know <laughs> It can, get, it can get a little tiring, especially if you've got cruise control in your vehicle and, and all of those things, it might be less tiring. Yeah. But certainly a 35-year-old vehicle, it can take it out of you. If you can, try and share your driving um, yeah. or take regular breaks. And try and plan some non-driving days. Yeah. That's, I think oh, that's, that's key. Yeah, I think that's the important thing. When you're... <laughs> you agree with the non-driving <laughs> days. I think that's the thing. When you live in a van, you constantly feel the need to keep moving and to move on. Whoa! Plan in some non-driving days. So Especially get, if you've got a dog. <laughs> yeah. So stock up on supplies. Make sure you've got all your water and your gas and everything you need. And factor in a couple of non-driving days in the week. Yeah. Absolutely, I think, is crucial. And you will thank yourself for it. Just, yeah, rest days. Yeah, for some, it might be an eye-opener for you how much you actually find yourself driving each day. But, yeah, as you said, there's ways to counteract that, yes. isn't there? Yes, share the driving, plan your routes, have backup spots. Ah, this is an interesting one. Point what number two. It? Two. Point number two. Two. <laughs> the price of campsites. Yeah. I think we may have touched on this in a previous yeah. video. We did not expect that there would be so many campsites ripping people off. Yeah, certainly the price of campsites is eye-watering a lot of the time, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, and that sounds like, well, haven't you stayed at campsites before? And we did. We didn't need to live in a van, though, so you don't pay attention. Well, no, to... and then I guess, like, from our experience in Leo, we'd sort of use campsites as a pit stop now we're self-contained we have a we have power we have a shower we have a toilet so literally we just need a place to to park up and get rid of waste fill up with fresh water and the prices now i understand services cost money yeah, you know we're, we're in our 40s we're not morons you know we've Things lived in houses money. we get that some of the campsites to stay in for seven nights you could do the same Go trip abroad. going abroad <laughs> than staying at some UK campsites. And it's just so frustrating. I mean, I saw on Instagram the other day, someone recommended this lovely campsite. They did chose not to put the pricing in. I see why. When I clicked through to try and book for one night, it's £47. Pounds, £47 pounds yeah, to, yeah, park on, to park with a view. And it's, you know... I don't know. It frustrates the hell out of me that we have so much complaints about people van lifing, yet campsites don't seem to get any stick for charging untold amounts of prices. But as a solution, how can you find campsites if you yep. park for night, which actually has more farmers' fields, yes. I guess, on there really, along with campsites. Yeah, I along with everything else that you find. We found some great farmers' fields starting at like five pounds a night, and that's for your whole van. Uh, a couple were ten pounds, and then obviously they sort of incrementally go up from there. But yeah, park for night. Check that out. Search for sites. You can actually go in and put in some further searches, and we can go in and say like select a swimming pool if you're abroad. I guess that's more key yeah park for night search sites what else do we use we use i was gonna say we're actually at a campsite right now where we are using electric and it's 23 pounds a night which i think is i don't think it's too bad no, really reasonable fair enough we're plugged in the whole time using our own facilities but we are using their water and we found this campsite on google maps yeah yeah i, I think it's kind of undiscoverable in in any other format it's not on yeah or, any other or a google search yeah 
yeah. to bring it up. But then you need to kind of like know where the campsite is and be searching for the campsite in that area. Google Maps is a good one. You can type in campsites or touring parks. You can go straight, have a look at reviews and pictures that people have left. If you're driving past, because we find loads of places as we're driving, but they mm. don't seem to be on Google Maps. So if there's more than one of you in the van for safety reasons, when you drive past somewhere and you're like, oh, that looks nice, and it's not on Google Maps, leave a pin drop on Google Maps and then save it in a list so you can go back, check it out later. You know, you can write the name down. Uh, if you like the look of it, give them a call. Not everyone's registered on Google Maps and Google My Business. Another good one is pitchup.com. We found a number of sites through PitchUp. Mm, yes, PitchUp is really good. Uh, you can go in, select a bunch of criteria. We've got a dog and I feel like he's crashing all the vision of this video, but, oh, but what a beautiful yeah. place. But we've got a dog, so we always select dogs are allowed. You can also go in there and use the other search facilities, you know, laundry, electric hookup etc so it's a great website just on that though if you do find someone on pitch up but you also find them online sometimes we then just call up and say oh do you mind if we pay you guys because obviously sorry pitch up pitch up takes a little fee that doesn't go to the campsite because we're all about helping these businesses out when we're giving them money another little tip on pitch up if it shows you that the campsite is full then actually give the campsite yeah. a call because a lot of campsites will only allocate a certain amount of pitches for pitch up to book found a campsite that on pitch up said was fully booked when we rang them they said no that's just the amount of allocated spaces for pitch up we've got plenty of space for you number three, three. so number three of things we didn't expect when living Thank in you. a van was the multitude of ways that you can van life to rewind it back when we were traveling around in leo our t5 we would do a lot of wild camping yeah we? and because that's what we chose to do we then researched that area of van life and watched particular van and lifers that were living the same way in what we wanted to step into yeah. then when we stepped into full-time van life we then did what we used to do but on a larger scale yeah. and we were doing a lot of wild camping gone each night next spot move on we almost didn't i know it might sound stupid but didn't know that there was other ways to do it if that makes we sense just didn't think about it really, well you that? want to maximize a life like this you want to get the most out yeah. of it don't you we just fell into into van life life that way but actually there are so many ways to live in a van we found actually quite a lot of people we were following don't necessarily van life in the uk therefore you know when you're in morocco wild camping moving on each night you know it is slightly different yeah, to, a little bit you know van lifing in the uk in november <laughs> day. the multitude of ways is quite interesting and actually something we've been revisiting and looking at just recently that it isn't all about you know the travel and the moving on each day and the world camping there are so many different ways you can do it aren't yeah there? you know you can get a seasonal pitch yeah. have a base for a, yeah. for a few months then travel outside of that we've seen a lot of people will do seasonal work be it at a campsite or something yeah. else within the summer they'll drill down work the summer and then go off and travel for yeah. for the wind autumn winter other people will just campsite surf yeah other people will only wild park we've seen in winter that a lot of people flock to scotland and it's a hell of a lot quieter up there if the weather's right it's beautiful isn't yeah. it yeah there's just so many different ways that you can do this yeah. life justice just sort of getting out there doing it and find what works for you yeah exactly don't pick don't box yourself in yeah because i know? think we boxed ourselves yeah, in absolutely. <laughs> and i think yeah. that's the thing when you yeah we we definitely boxed ourselves in that we had to keep moving each day and yeah. wild, wild camping and, and for us that wasn't sustainable you know this isn't just a life of travel this is our everyday life as well so we're factoring in exploring and and living and working and and everything else that comes with that which kind of actually takes us on to our next point which is i think we did expect it but we didn't expect the impact being so close to nature would have on us oh that yeah, uh, yeah, you, yeah. you thought i was gonna yeah, say the weather yeah. <laughs> not yet mate that's why we love to van life yeah. is being connected to nature yeah. it's a very different feeling from being connected to nature to actually living with the elements yeah on a daily basis like where we are now it's fairly quiet and all we can hear is bird song which is <laughs> pretty unusual from the life we lived before and pretty beautiful you know and then when we've been in scotland 
waking up and there's deers roaming around and mountains or a lock. Or those moments are priceless. And then as you've seen in other videos, we've been in the new forest and yeah, we're waking up and, and exploring around such vast amounts of nature and forests and animals. And I think it's that appreciation. When we lived in a house, obviously a good day would be a blue sky day or the sun's out mm. or, you know, it's not raining. When you live in a van, you're so connected to nature. That you learn to appreciate all of the elements and I know it sounds cheesy but like you learn to dance in the rain you really yeah. do because you know if you van life in the UK and just live for blue sky days yeah it's not gonna happen that's just not a reality so you learn to appreciate when it's raining you find we find we'll go and find a woods that we can walk in so you can just hear the pitter patter and yeah. um, you know when the sun's not shining and there's a little breeze we'll wrap up warm and go and sit outside and have our yeah. coffee and yeah you're just not waiting you don't wait for the weather you just learn to embrace it and enjoy yeah. it and yeah with that comes all of the beautiful things of as Tris said you know sitting outside bundled up wrapped up in the new forest as the sun setting you hear the most stunning bird song yeah. it's so beautiful it really is and yeah would we have done that if we lived in a house no, no. you know we would have looked out the window and said that's cold we're not sitting out there mm. so yeah it forces you when you live in a smaller space the outside becomes your extension yeah number five yep Point number five is the weather. Now, we know that this shouldn't be a mis-expectation. Or surprise. Or surprise. If you are planning on van lifing in the UK, you do have to be prepared for the bipolar weather that can happen. Yeah, possible four seasons in one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happens. Just a, a basic reality. I don't know how many of you are aware when you live in a house of the shorter days in the winter. I don't ever feel like it's impacted me as much. You know, you're in your house, you turn all your lights on, you crack on with, you know, you, you have more space when you can't be yeah. outside. Whereas when you live in a van and the day ends at four o'clock, your space becomes a lot smaller and you suddenly become way more aware of yeah, the weather don't yeah, you yeah definitely that's not even touching on the rain I mean, that's something we've we found is it's got cold this winter isn't it that was to be expected i mean i think it's a little tad colder than we thought because all our doors froze shut and we snapped a door handle trying to get into our frozen vans that was fun yeah the rain was just been biblical isn't it it's, yeah we, we hit october i think and then it seems like it's just sort of rained until now on and off but we spoke to loads of other sort of like people at campsites on the road and stuff like that and even like a farmer up in Scotland and yeah it seems like the the rain has been unprecedented I thought it was just because we were in this well in a van and we we're more attuned to the outside so it was kind of like wow it rains a lot more but no seemingly it has rained quite a lot a helpful tip if you're thinking of getting into this way of life whether that's for weekends full time or whatever have a think about the size of your van keep in mind the weather and shorter days and things like that yeah I think that's it I think it's it's not a negative the weather it's just a, an absolute reality yeah prepare yourself so get yourself some thermals and some waterproofs and some wellies if you're in the south of England <laughs> absolutely prepare yourself that it is going to rain a lot it is going to be cold so make sure that you have all of the gear to counteract that or it might be you know what hobbies do you want to invest in because there is a lot of downtime in winter van life yeah. because your your exploring time is cut in half be prepared expect the unexpected yeah, I With, think that's a motto for van life, really, yeah, though, isn't yeah, it? Expect the unexpected. <laughs> what yeah. did you not expect when you started van lifing? What was a bit of a shock to the system or a yeah. nice surprise? Yeah. You know, what was a nice surprise? Something that you didn't think would happen? I mean, we found a campsite in Scotland that is a touted as sort of a van lifer's haven, yeah. uh, where if you are a full-time van lifer, you can go and stay for completely, completely for free. Yeah. That was unexpected. Never expected to come across something like that. No. You know. Okay, so it says pop, pop down in the comments things that you found good, bad, or ugly that you didn't expect. Because what we've started to find in the comments is there's a lot of people actually on their journey to starting van life. What your experiences are could really help someone else prepare for their journey let's mm. make this a two-way convo people we're on buy me a coffee so thanks to everyone who's bought us a coffee so far we really appreciate it we do have a shop on there and we're offering some of our free photography for some of the epic locations that we've been to get yourself over there and download yourself a free 
image and then in the palm of your hand you can always have something nice to look at wherever you are even if you're having a boring day at work hopefully we cheered you up <laughs> yeah don't forget to subscribe because it seems like about 70 percent of people that watch our videos aren't subscribed so just pause it here and then just click subscribe and we'll give you a million blessings <laughs> god bless you uh anyway don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell notification. Until next time, folks, bye for now.